So last time we made this uh, fantastic, very organic, fun looking particle system, uh, but we can see our FPS is starting to take a little bit of a hit. And that is mostly because this is now spawning in like, I don't know, what is it spawning in? Like 500 meshes per second or something like that? 1500 meshes per second. That's a lot of meshes every single second. And it's doing all that on the CPU. So that's not ideal. So what we can do is we can go up in here into the properties and we can change the sim target from a CPU sim to a GPU compute sim. And immediately it runs so much smoother. But there is a few little issues with this. And that is to do with the fact that and I'm probably not going to make a specific video about this. Uh, but if you simulate something on the CPU, you can have collision because things that happen on the CPU are like physically present in the world. It can have interaction with things that are also physically present in the world, such as colliders. GPU particles aren't physically present in the world. They are just being rendered there by the GPU. The GPU doesn't know what is going on on the CPU. All that the GPU does is it just takes in a bunch of data, calculates a lot of very tiny things very fast and pushes out pixels to your screen. GPUs don't do collision. They don't do like a lot of logic. They just are really, really good for rendering. So if you have something that's complex to uh, simulate or complex to render in and of itself, this is messing up a little bit, GPU particles might be necessary. But there's a couple of issues. Because these only are kind of like another layer rendered on top of the actual game world, almost. It's not quite how it works, but almost. It, they will only be able to uh, be visible within a certain bound, which is to say, because they're not physically present in the world, the GPU needs to know when to simulate and when to render these things, because it has no idea where they physically exist inside of the world otherwise. So here we can calculate bounce mode uh, and we can set that to dynamic and usually that's actually pretty good. So let's take this anagram emitter that we've been using and we can actually just immediately create a system out of it. And if we put this into uh, the world, it will start spawning in our particles, which is absolutely fantastic. It's also a little bit bigger than I initially anticipated. But you might be able to see if we go up against the edge and the origin point of our particle system is properly off screen, it just stops rendering it all together, which is not ideal, right? Especially for things that are uh, big like this, that can be a real issue. So a way to combat that is instead of using dynamic, we can use a programmable or a fixed bounce. And fixed bounce, you can just say, okay, within 100 by 100 by 100 units in this case, in all directions, uh, that also, as long as any of this bounding box is on screen, render these particles, which extends uh, that rendering uh, quite far. So if we can just say, hey, we just want uh, to render this if anything within a thousand units of the origin point of this actor is in view. Now we should be able to see that it will still disappear, but it will disappear a fair bit later of our screen. Like at some point it will We've actually kind of done it. There we go. Uh, it, it disappears, but it disappears a fair bit later. So uh, that does come with, of course, computing cost, because having that fixed bound means that it's also going to be potentially rendering unnecessarily when it doesn't always need to be rendering uh, a lot of the time. So if we just switch this back to CPU, you can see that it uh, can just have like the dynamic uh, bounds. Now, the CPU dynamic bounds are by no means infallible you can still make your particles like disappear if you like move away far enough from the emitter and look at like a weird angle away from it you can see that they still do disappear but it's a lot more robust on the cpu than it is on the gpu but that's not even the biggest thing with the uh gpu and cpu difference the biggest difference between gpu and cpu particles is that CPU particles have the possibility to have collision. Of course, that is quite expensive <laughs> because there's a lot of collisions happening here. So let's actually decrease the spawn rate here back to like 500 uh, since we're doing this on the CPU. And in particle update, we're going to put in collision. 
Now, we can say our CPU collision type can be uh, either ray traced or uh, analytics planes. For the most part, ray traced is a little bit more expensive, uh, I believe, but more accurate. And we can say whether or not the collision is enabled or not. And then we've got a couple of different uh, things that we can uh, set what like the collision radius is, how it calculates that. We can just use the mesh for that. Again, that is going to be a fair bit more expensive for obvious reasons. Uh, and when it collides with something, it has uh, some bounciness to it. Uh, it can have some friction to it. Just normal collision stuff. And what's really cool is this stuff down here, right? You can say when you collide with something, you can advance the age of your particle by a certain amount. So particles that collide with walls will die quicker than particles that are just floating in midair. That's quite cool. Anyway, now that we have the... Uh, collisions enabled here, you will be able to see that uh, no longer do these particles move through everything. They kind of hang out on this platform and then they fall off onto uh, the ground here, which is where they eventually uh, do end up dying. So it's not like because they have gravity, they stop um, floating around. You can see these ones still float around without a problem. But these ones, in their path of their force that they're being pushed around in, just happen to collide with something else. And that means that they can't keep moving downward. So the force is still moving them in roughly this direction, but the downward direction, they can't move there. So they just kind of move along uh, the top of this block here. If we set the uh, bounciness to an insane rate, this is going to look very stupid. But I've set the bounciness here to... 500 and this is going to uh yeah be kind of wild <laughs> that's uh that's what that ends up uh doing which is quite cool in a way i guess 500 is maybe a little bit too much specifically with the uh curl noise force and the drag that i have set up from the last part of this series uh things get a little bit iffy sometimes but 500 is definitely too much let's just set this to like 10. <laughs> And now you can see when they land on the ground, they bounce around and then they get picked back up by the cruel noise force, which actually makes for a slightly more chaotic, but still like quite fun to look at kind of particle system. And once again, if I now change this over back to uh, a GPU sim, it's going to yell at me about the uh, collisions. Because now we are using a GPU collision type, which is possible... It is a thing that you can do, it's just a little iffy. Because instead of using the actual collision of everything, what it uses is it uses the depth buffer. And what that means is we have like the uh, camera that renders our uh, scene, right? That's a very good camera, it has a field of view. Uh, and we have like a ground here, and we have like a, uh, a tree, very good tree, very good at drawing, right here, right? The camera just renders those pixels to the screen with like the perspective and everything like that, but it is also aware of how far every single like pixel on your screen is away from the camera. So it knows uh, this tree is closer to the camera uh, than this piece of ground. So it can use that because if it sees, hey, this particle is at the same depth as this tree, that means that they're colliding. So I can calculate collision off of that and I can like bounce them off of that and that works for the most part, except that with a CPU simulation, uh, it uses the actual colliders here, so it collides all over the place. And what that can do, what the GPU particle can't do, is collide from this direction. Because all a GPU particle can do is use the depth buffer of every single pixel that it can see. It can't calculate things that it cannot see, because it's being done on a GPU. This is the huge thing about collision with gpu and cpu now we also have uh, distance fields which work similarly it just checks uh, whether or not a particle is close to a mesh that is emitting a distance field and it'll bounce off of that that works a little bit more smoothly than the depth buffer i believe it does have an experimental ray tracing gpu option which in theory i believe this is supposed to negate the issue with the depth buffer method in that this will be able to ray trace on the GPU and fix the like occlusion issue. 
But it is experimental, so it is probably also prone to breaking. Maybe in the future, if you're watching this like a year from now, uh, this will have been fully developed and everything works perfectly, at which point there's going to be increasingly little reason to simulate on the CPU, but for now there's definitely still a lot of reason to simulate things on the CPU. So, for the most part, rule of thumb, lots of particles means GPU, accurate particles means CPU. And that's the difference between GPU particles and CPU particles. And this girl noise force is still just very satisfying to look at. I can look at this all day. But we won't because this is the end of this episode. Next time uh, we're going to be talking about some more fun stuff again. See you then. And for the full course, if you're watching this in the future, it should be all up on the YouTube channel already. But if you're watching this shortly after it was uploaded, there will be a link down below in the description to the Patreon where you can find the full course. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons, you can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. A huge thank you to my Cave Student tier supporters, Earl Monteville Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, 